Weefy's is trying to decorate his new humongous house with a small zen pool water farm, except the problem is he only has one water bucket and there's not any water around for miles. Luckily, we have just a solution. Do you want to know how to duplicate water, Weefies? Well, we've got a life hack for you. All you need are some tools, and let's get going outside the house. The first step is to mine seven pieces of iron. Iron ore is a bit heavy, so don't carry too much or you might hurt your arms. Now that you have seven pieces of iron, also mine three pieces of sand. You will need it later. Okay, Weefies, you can't be outside for too long. Let's go back inside the house and get you some more water. First, smelt your iron and sand so you can get seven iron ingots and three pieces of glass. Be sure not to get too close to the furnace or you might be burned. Ouchie. Once you have all your stuff, craft the cauldron with the iron by making a U-shape in your crafting table as such. Then, being careful not to cut yourself on the pointy glass, make a smaller U-shape to craft three bottles. Now for the magic part of the trick. Place down your water into a 2x2 two two area. Then fill up all three of the bottles you made. Pour those bottles into the cauldron and grab the newly created source water with your now empty bucket. Finally, put the new water diagonal from the first one and enjoy your new infinite water source. Fill the whole zen pool around. It looks lovely. Great job, Weefies. Do you want to try out some Nor life hacks? Let's get right into it. After no life mining for several hours on end, Weefies has become considerably rich. He has more diamonds than ever before, and he has no idea what to do with them at this point. But with great power comes great enemies, and many are attracted to Weefies' vast wealth. Weefies' non-existent friends are always trying to steal his diamonds. What is he supposed to do? Do you want a life hack, Weefies? Cause we've got one. Weefies has a lot of redstone machinery, but he isn't very smart. So we're gonna have to show him how to do this one. Dig out an area that's this size, dimensions will be on screen. And maybe Weefies you should place some ladders so you can get out easier. Aw oh, Weefies, you idiot, why'd you break those blocks? Now you have to clean up that mess. Let's start the tutorial. For simplicity's sake, we're gonna be controlling Weefies through his body. That way, we can show you guys the tutorial as simple as possible. And Weefies will learn how to do it by hand if he ever needs to. Now, this is the only area we're actually going to be placing blocks on, this little strip. However, it is important to note that I only dug this out to move around, so if you really don't want to dig that big of a hole, I'm sorry if you already did, but I should have put a disclaimer earlier. This is the chest where all your items are going to be stored. This is your secret chest. It's going to be where the items are hidden, and you want to set it up with a slab above it as such. You want to set up your chest so you can then know how to place the rest of the area. So once you have your chest placed down, you're going to want to go one, two, three, four. And then this strip is where all your redstone is going to be. Just so you know if this like destroys your house or something. The resources you're going to need are as follows. Two redstone dust, one sticky piston, one minecart with a hopper, two hoppers, one chest or two chests, personal preference, and I'll show you where that comes in. Two repeaters, one rail, eight wool or blocks of choice, one comparator, three redstone torches, and your floorboards. Now I'm going to begin with the chests because that's the optional part. The chests are going to house the items that you've thrown into the system. It is important to note you are not going to get these items back. So as such, I want to know that I have as much area as possible to throw items in, which is why I have two chests, but you can have whatever you want. The first thing you want to do is place a block up here and a block right here. On this one, you're going to want to put a repeater so to no ticks, and then on top of this one, a redstone torch with a sticky piston on top, and then one of your floorboard blocks. This piston is going to retract, allowing you to see into the floor and grab the items from your chest or, you know, put in some items. Deposit some items, if you will. Afterwards, you're going to want to go next to this redstone torch and place your two collection chests just like that. A hopper going up like this, a hopper going up like that, and then a minecart with a, mi uh, a rail with a minecart with a hopper on top. We are now done with all those items, so I'm going to put them away so hoppers are gone. And now we're onto the home stretch. This is all the redstone logistics of the build, and it's not very complicated whatsoever. You're going to want to place a block here with a comparator just like so, just like so. And then the going out of that is a block with a redstone torch on its butt. Going down two more, you want to go to this and place a redstone dot, and then a repeater set to three ticks, so right click it twice. Afterwards, you're going to go back here and then place blocks here and here, then remove this temporary block, place redstone dust, and a redstone torch. 
This is the entire build all done and dusted. It looks like this. I'll give you guys a little look at it. So we... And that is the entire build. You can see if we were to throw some secret items into this, this will actually have our thing retract, but only for a millisecond. So only we can see what's going in. And then to every other player, it looks like we're just staring out into the AFKness. However, we are actually in the chest. The block has already retracted by the time you are done with your exchange. So now we can just fill up the floorboards, and this shouldn't interfere as all the redstone logistics are below the surface level, so if I were to place anything on top, it wouldn't get powered or anything. And that is the entire system. All you need is a way to remember it, so I actually don't remember where it was. Oh, it looks like it was here, so if I just go back and retrace my steps, it should be here, and then it opens up. So it is a bit fast. And there is a way to customize the delay. If you actually go down here, you can change this to four and then you'll be ready. And what this does is if I were to throw one right here, I can actually have a bit of time to get ready and then boom. Okay, well maybe, maybe I'm not that good, but maybe it's Weefy slow reflexes. Regardless, that is a secret contraption and that is life hack number two. Hope that was good. Weefies, I see you are simply chilling in your lavish new hillside resort. There's only one problem though. It sticks out like a sore thumb in the mountain, you gotta do something about that. But don't worry, Weefies, we have a life hack for that. You want a life hack to hide your house? Yes? Perfect. The first step is to dig out a hole in front of your house. It doesn't actually have to be this big, but I would rather just have space to move around, you know? It'd be easier that way. Here's what you'll need. We're gonna be building a redstone torch key as well as this very secret hidden door. The resources you're going to be required are one button, two comparators, 14 sticky pistons, seven redstone dust, two redstone repeaters, one redstone torch, and one observer. To connect the torch key to the actual door and the input to the door, we're going to be requiring a few extra pieces of redstone dust, redstone repeaters, and redstone torches. You don't actually need this many, and I also recommend having some wall blocks so you can fill in at the end as well as have something to build on. I recommend making this all one block as not to waste resources. Let's start the tutorial. Hope this works. To make this easier to follow, and to make sure Weefies actually remembers what to do, we're going to be building the tutorial again in first person. Let's get started. The first thing you're going to need is to make the door. This door is entirely symmetrical, so I'm only building one half to save your time. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to your wall and place two sticky pistons just like so. They should be one block away from your entrance, and your entrance should be a 2x2 two two square of air. Next, place two sticky pistons upright like this. So if I were to mirror it, I would place the same thing on the other wall, like so. I'll leave that there, but I won't be doing anything else on this side on camera. Afterwards, place your wall block right here, and then go up to the top of the pistons. You're going to want to place three construction blocks on top, just like so, and then a redstone repeater set to two ticks on this block. So it's two ticks, you're going to want to right-click it once, and then place two redstone dust just here. Afterwards, you're going to want to place a block and more redstone dust like that, and that is one half of your door. You don't want to mirror that on the other side. Once completed, it should look like this, and this is your actually finished door. You're not going to want to place your button just yet, we're actually going to go to the redstone torch key, how we open this from the outside. You're going to want to find an area that's reasonably close by, and is actually hidden. So if I were to place my redstone torch on this block, which is how we'll be building it, you're going to want to make sure that the block below it, you cannot see the block two blocks below it. So this block, the one under this dirt, this block right here cannot be visible if you don't want any redstone to show. You're going to want to go underneath the block with your torch. So if I were to just head out, the torch would be right here. So underneath this block, and you're going to want to place a downwards facing sticky piston. Remove your redstone torch as this will cause unwanted complications. Next, place an observer and make sure the air underneath this block is empty and place an observer facing outwards. So the little dot is going that way. Place a block with some redstone dust on top, and then a sticky piston facing upwards. This is your entire redstone torch key done, but it's not actually long enough to hold the door open. You're going to want to connect this to what is called a pulse extender. You place a repeater just like so, and then place a redstone dust, and then another redstone dust to the side. Then place a comparator facing outwards, and then a comparator facing inwards, like so. And finally, you want to place a block right here with some redstone dust. This is your pulse extender. If I were to place this redstone torch, it wouldn't do anything, because the pulse is short. However, if I set this repeater to 4 ticks by right-clicking it 3 times, and then place redstone torch, you can see this pulse lasts for a very long time, which is perfect. You're going to want to place a redstone torch up here, and then continue a redstone torch tower depending on how tall your actual build is. So I'm going to be going up with scaffolding, but you can go up however you like. Just make sure that blocks are not, the torches are not placed on the walls, so you want to follow this pattern as I demonstrate on screen block, 
torch and then keep going until you reach the elevation of your door so once I actually find a way to get up here boom and boom place another block and then finally another torch it's very important to make sure the final torch is on or else you're gonna need to do a signal inverter once you've reached the door and our door I believe is right over here you can now bridge and connect your redstone line into the door but you have to do it very specifically place a redstone line just like here and then make sure that the redstone line threads around any of the redstone you can't have it doing that that's gonna break the door be very careful and do as I do or very similar make sure not to interrupt the wall either as you do want the store to be hidden of course feel free to place blocks right here as they're not actually interfered with by the mechanism of the door now be careful to thread your redstone around the current redstone dust and very slowly make your redstone up so it touches the middle of the circuitry what this looks like is just like that and you want it to touch this block right here without touching any of the other redstone so if I just string this on top you can see the entire door is now open feel free to close anything and light anything up as you please as you can see the door now looks completely covered all I need to do to activate it is place a redstone torch on the block before and I can then make my way inside the door just be sure to go in fast as it might close behind you now if you actually want to open the door it's a bit more complicated but still very simple go underneath your base and connect yourself to the pulse extender that you made I'm gonna be digging a little bit so I'll just cut to the part where I actually find what I need to find here we go, here's the pulse extender, that was pretty fast. So now we've got to place the redstone dust and string it along just like so. It's very simple and you're going to want to place it so that there's a floor block right above a redstone dust. Afterwards just go up and then place your button and you can see we can actually press this button and the door opens for us. Perfect. Then we can grab our redstone torch and be on our way or we can just grab it right here. Very simple. And then enter our luxurious base. Ow. So Weefies, are you enjoying with your new door? Great. Well, that concludes our video. Actually, those are three life hacks that just hacked your life in Minecraft. I hope you all have enjoyed. Consider subscribing. Weefies would really love it, wouldn't you? I know. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.